Hello, everybody. It's me, Shannon LaBruyere. I am live and loving it tonight. It is Sunday, November 24th, 2019. It is the Sunday before Thanksgiving here in the United States. I'm already getting some thumbs up. I love that. Hello and welcome. Oh, awesome to have you here. You know, I think before I get started on my, oh, hi, Ken, good to see you. Before I get started on our lesson tonight, which is going to be a good one, and I'm glad you're tuning in for it. Hi, Dan, it's good to see you. Um, and good job, I heard you did great work in the play that you were in last night, so that's pretty awesome. Missy, I'm glad you're here. Gosh, I love all these people rolling on. Ricky, yay, glad to have you. Love all the hearts. Oh my gosh, I love that. Carol's here. Thank you for being here. You must have had a busy day and I'm so excited that you're jumping on. Pam, I'm glad you're here. Yes, oh my gosh, you guys. It's fun to see some of these new faces that I haven't seen in a while live. So thank you for being here. And I love the emojis, they stir my heart. So thank you for the hearts and the thumbs up. I love it. Mary Bell Edwards, you and Carol are right next to each other on my screen here scrolling, which is totally appropriate since you guys are related and it's good to have you. I'm so glad you're here. Awesome, awesome. Let me just say before we jump into today's, to today's lesson, I am so extremely thankful for you. I cannot believe the times that we live in. Hi, Dawn, I'm glad you're here. Oh, and Pam set her alarm, I love it. Dawn, always good to see you live. I love to see you here. I'm just grateful for all of you. I am so grateful as we're approaching the Thanksgiving season here in the United States, as we're approaching the holidays where we spend a lot of time with people um, at dinners and opening presents and, and having feasts. Uh, I want you to know that I think that this, what we have here, and I'm going to cry, just so you know, what we have here and the opportunities that we have on Facebook um, to be able, to, and not just Facebook, on YouTube, on Snapchat, Instagram, all the, all the different social media, the opportunities that we have to connect with each other in meaningful ways is just profoundly moving to me. And I was thinking how I have done Sunday Night Live over 70 times. Um, I didn't, haven't counted recently, but over 70 Sunday nights, except for two, I think, I missed. Hi, Ron, and you're, you're tuning in from vacation. Awesome to see you. Um, I have been able to be with you for 70 Sundays in a row, and some of you are in Barbados, and some of our, you are in the Philippines, and some of you are in Central America, some of you are just down the street. I'm just grateful. So thank you. Thank you for connecting with me, allowing me to speak into your lives. Thank you for trusting me with a half hour or more of your time because uh, as you know, um, time is the most important resource that we have and I don't take it lightly that you spend it with me. I'm honored to spend it with you. So, oh, Donna, hi, I'm glad you're here. All right, so we're gonna get started. Um, I was thinking today about LeBron James. LeBron James, if you don't know, is probably, you know, some people might argue about it, but he is probably the best basketball player of the last 15 years, 20 years. Um, of course, Michael Jordan, Jordan was pretty awesome too, but um, LeBron James um, had a little bit of something going that happened when he was young, really young. Uh, LeBron James was born in 1984, and so the whole television media thing, celebrities were just getting really rolling, um, sports stars. And LeBron James was a sports celebrity when he was in high school. People recognized that he had talent and they wanted to watch. And LeBron James knew from a very young age that he was very good at basketball. 
If he didn't know it himself, there were a lot of people who noticed it and they told him LeBron James was great at basketball. And because he was very good and then started focusing on that when he was in high school and started really maximizing his talents and abilities, he was one of the earliest people to go and I'm saying that wrong so all you sports guys don't judge me because I'm not sporty I just know the story I don't know the specifics um, all I'm trying to say is LeBron James was kind of a child when he went into the National Basketball League the NBA the National Basketball Association he was a kid people knew he had talent they saw he had talent he worked on that. He got good and then he got great and he went into the NBA at a very young age and he still to this day trains and works out and has a crazy food schedule, sleep schedule, workout schedule. He does yoga. He still to this day works on being great. He was very, very good and now he is great. He's one of the greatest. And I wanted to talk about the dangers, the hazards of being very good. Because there's a hazard that comes with being very good at something. If you're not very good at something like basketball, where there are people scouting for you, looking, looking at stats, sending people out to watch your high school games, if you're not very good at a skill that's in high demand, for example, in the sports arena, you might not get noticed. And you might not put in the effort that it takes to get great. It's so easy to overlook when we're very good at something. But there's a difference between being very good and being great. And I wanna talk about the hazards of being very good. Because if we get stuck in the trap of very good, we will squander our potential. We will not live up to our potential. We will not necessarily live in our purpose to our fullest gifts. And that is to me a tragedy. I want people to thrive. I want people to grow. I think that we were all designed to be in our strength zones. So let's talk about the three hazards of being very good. Number one is this. When we are very good, we coast. We coast because we don't have to work at it. So if you are a very good, if you're very good at math, it can be very tempting to just get good grades, right? It's easy. I'm just gonna do math, I'm gonna get good grades, and then I'm gonna go off and I'm gonna use my spare time that all of my friends spent studying. I'm gonna spend my spare time out there, who knows, going to parties, hanging out with my friends, whatever it is. I'm good at math, I'm very good at math. I don't have to work at it. Whew. That means I can sit back and coast, right? I can sit back and coast. This is a problem. Hello, Anne. It's good to see you. This is a problem because when we are coasting, we are not growing. We are not getting better. And when things come easily to us, it is so tempting to just sit back and let very good be good enough. And that's a problem because if we're very good at something, there's the potential with just a little bit of extra attention. There's the potential for us to be great. This is what happens when we compare the things that we are very good at with the people next to us who maybe they're not very good at it. We can feel like, oh yeah, we got it going on. Yeah, I'm really excellent at that. Hmm, maybe not. You're just better than the person next to you. We need to change our standard. When we are very good at something, that is not a call for us to be able to coast and take it easy. I hate to break it to you. When we are very good at something, it is our call 
to step it up to the next level. When we are very good at something, when somebody tells us, wow, Shannon, you are a very good speaker, it would be tempting to just be very good. But not a whole lot's happening for very good. The impact, everything expands when we get great. And our potential to get great is found in the areas where we are very good. So if you are very good in an area, if you are very good with people, if you are very good at being an administrative assistant and helping executives and keeping them on track, what can you do to take that very good skill and put in the work that it takes to get great? What would happen if you did that? What area of your life are you coasting? It's like, whew, so glad that's not a big deal for me. It's not the opportunity to sit back and be lazy. It is the call for you to lean in and say, how can I pedal a little instead of coasting? How can I pedal a little and really take this thing that I'm very good at and turn it into something awesome? All right. The second hazard of being very good at something is we fly solo. We fly solo because we're good at it. We don't have to ask for help. And if we're not careful, when we're very good, when we're in our strength zone and we're very good at something, we don't make connections in that area like we could because we can do it all ourselves. We're not driven by the need to ask somebody to help us out. This is not good because one is too small a number for significance. I'll quote my friend and mentor, John Maxwell. One is too small a number for significance. If I am very good at something and I don't need anybody else's help, I have limited the amount of significance I'm going to be able to have because I'm not connecting with others. Hello, Kiwana. It's good to have you here. All right. So number one is if we're very good at something, we are tempted to coast. Number two, when we are very good at something, we sometimes go solo. We don't look for help. We don't make connections with people. We don't look for opportunities to take that thing that we're very good at, combine it with the strengths of somebody else and amplify it so that the impact is so much bigger. Ooh, the live crashed on uh, Dawn's end. Dawn, I'm hoping that that wasn't for everybody. Other people are chiming in. It looks like they're doing good. So hopefully you'll be able to pick it back up. Um, sorry about that, Dawn. I'm done. Okay, number three is this. When we are very good at something, we can be a big fish in a little pond and we can feel significant and be satisfied. When we're in our strength zone, people notice it. They notice it. I don't care what your strength is. If you're a great basketball player like LeBron James, people noticed it. If you're a great singer, people notice it. If you're a great, you name it, people notice great, but they don't always notice very good. And when we're very good, we can get real comfortable in this small circle where the people around us know what we're capable of. They know we're good at that. And we can just be the best of this small little group, the big fish in a little pond. And we can be satisfied with that. And that's not okay. Oh, Deborah, good to see you. It's not okay to be a big fish in a little pond if your potential is to be a big fish in a big pond. And I'm not trying to be judgy here. I just realized I keep saying it's not okay. You know what? It is okay. If, if that's what you choose, it's okay. You get to pick. But I will say this. It's regrettable. Because the potential you have with the gifts that God gave you is so profound that when you allow yourself to be satisfied being the, the biggest fish in that little pond, you have cut your influence short. 
Your ability to change the world for the better, your ability to make a difference is cut short because we get satisfied being the big fish in the little pond. It's easy to do. But I want to tell you this. This is the hopeful piece. If you're very good at something, and I don't care what it is, you may be a very good encourager. Rich Krieger, I'm so glad you're here. Um, oh, Carol can still hear me. Missy's getting kicked off the internet too. I don't know what's going on with this, people, but hopefully those of you who can hear me, um, if you can't, you'll be able to go back and watch it on YouTube. Um, all right, so when we have gifts, whether we are very good at being an encourager, we might be a very good singer, we might be a very good cook, we might be a very good organizer, we might be a very good connector where we connect people, we might be a very good house cleaner. It doesn't matter where we are very good with focus and attention, we can take that very good and make it great. Until 2014, I did not know that. <laughs> I am ashamed to admit it. I did not know that I could, with time and intention and purpose, look at my strengths, the area where I'm very good, the area where I succeed with little effort, I did not realize that I should be putting my focus and energy into making those areas better. I thought that I was supposed to be putting my purpose and energy into the areas where I wasn't very good. Have you fallen into that trap? Have you fallen into that trap before where you think, oh, you know what, I'm good enough at that. Yeah, you know what, I'm a good cook. But um, you know what, I'm just really not good at, maybe, let's do it this way. I am a great baker, but I'm really not good at cooking dinners. Maybe I should just spend a little bit more time trying to get better at cooking dinners. It's a choice. You get to make it. But this is what I learned in 2014, that we get much bigger bang for the buck if we put our effort into taking our very good and making it great than we do by taking all of that hard work and effort and trying to take something that we're not good at and try to make it better. The best will do. I'll tell you what, I'm the worst putt-putt golfer ever. I am a terrible putt-putt golfer. Not that you really need a putt-putt golf skill, but I'm sure there's competitions out there. People are probably winning money. I am a terrible putt-putt golfer. The time it would take for me to master the hand-eye coordination that it takes to get that little ball to go through the blades of the windmill and into the hole aren't worth my time. I would invest so much effort and at best I'm gonna be okay it doesn't matter if I take the time to invest in the areas where I am strong that time that I spent trying to be okay if I put it over here where I am very good I will become great and great has a much better bigger impact than very good a much bigger impact but it's when we choose to focus on the areas where we are strong. Now that doesn't mean that we have to let everything go and that we don't have to do anything but that one specific activity. But I will say this, there's probably a lot of things on your list that you've been working on that you don't like doing them, you're not particularly great at them, and there's not a big payoff for you, and yet you continue to try to slog through it. I'm going to give you permission right now to stop. You don't have to. You don't have to do it. There is somebody else somewhere who can do that thing for you. Jim, I'm glad you're here. So glad to see you. There is somebody else who can do that thing that you're not very good at and it's easy for them and they're very good, great at it. Find that person then you can focus on taking your very good gifts and making them great. This is what made me think of it. For the past month and a half or so, I have been feeling in my business this, I'm gonna describe it as torque. Like I take one step, one action, I do one thing, 
and I feel like it propels me so far. Where when I was first getting started on my business, I felt like I was pedaling very fast, but I wasn't getting very far. But as I started focusing on what am I good at? What are my gifts? What are my skills? I am starting, all of a sudden, I'm noticing I am significantly better at coaching. I'm significantly better at speaking. I am significantly better at making connections with other business people and forming relationships that are mutually beneficial. These are all areas where I had high skills. I was very good at them, but I'm starting to feel the impact of getting great. Carol, thank you for saying yes I am. I'm not the only one. Every last one of you that's watching this has areas where you are really good. You're a really good encourager. You're a really good friend. You are really good at figuring out how to untangle complicated problems. You have skills that if you were to spend a little extra time focusing on them, you wouldn't be pedaling like this. You'd be taking one good strong pedal and whoosh, flying down the road. It's amazing what happens when we give ourselves permission to let go of the things that we're just okay at and we focus our attention on taking what we're very good at and becoming great. Athletes do this all the time. We're accustomed to seeing athletes do it. LeBron James did it. Michael Jordan did it. These, these high level athletes don't spend their days learning how to macrame, and then maybe going out and trying bowling and seeing if they can get good at bowling. If they do, it's a hobby. It's a hobby. We're allowed to have hobbies, but when we want to be impactful, when we want to actually have our the meat of our work, our careers have massive impact, we have to set aside those things that we are not great at and focus on the things that we are so that we can become everything we need to be, that reach our potential. Our potential is unlimited. Um, we can get a little bit better every day and then just a little bit better the next day and just a little bit better the next day. And before you know it, we've gone this far, but it won't be because we sat back and coasted because, oh yeah, I'm really good at that. I don't even have to think about it which is how I spent my whole high school career, pretty much. Yeah, I'm good at that. I don't have to worry about it. Yeah, I'm good at that. I don't have to worry about it. That, that piece is easy for me. I, that was one area that I did have it easy was I was a, a good student. Uh, there were other areas in my life, not good at all, right? I had weaknesses. But until 2014, I thought my job was to focus on my weaknesses. And what have we said here over and over and over? You could all say it with me. Let's go, one, two, three. Where our focus goes, our energy flows. When we focus on the areas where we fall short and spend so much time trying to get just a little bit better, we are robbing our purpose and our potential. We are robbing our purpose and our potential because that energy could go into taking our very good and up-leveling it so that it has massive impact. And we have massive torque. When we take one step, it's meaningful. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Pam says she loves it, and Carol's been giving me some hearts, which is good. Eric, I'm glad you're here. It is so tempting to let our strengths just perk along. And we go through life. And we're a big fish in a little pond because we're good at this one thing. And it can be such a regrettable gift because we don't take advantage of it. Don't fall into the trap of thinking that because you're very good at something, it doesn't require your attention. Quite the opposite. We see every Sunday with the great football players what happens. When people who are very good at one thing take the time and the energy and get the coaching and the education 
and the training that they need to take that thing that they're very good at and blow it up until they're great. We can do the same with our skills. Now I wanna invite you, what are your skills? What are you very good at? Drop them in the comments. What are you very good at? And that's the place that you can, these coming weeks, look at how can you pour some energy into those areas? How can you get just a little bit better at those things, at that one thing? Whatever that gift is that you have, when you put your energy and your focus on it, it is going to exponentially improve. Exponentially. I will never be a fast runner. I have led somewhere in my body. I don't think I ingested it, but there's somewhere. I've got lead weights. I feel like I'm running like the wind. I felt like this since I was a child. I felt like I was running like the wind. Woo, woo, woo. And really, I was dragging way behind everybody else. I just don't have the build, the physique for being a fast runner but I do have other skills. I could have spent a long time trying to get to be a better runner when I was in track in junior high. Wasn't gonna make me a winner, wasn't gonna help me, wasn't gonna get me anywhere. But I'll tell you what, when I found the debate club and I realized, ooh, I can, I can learn to make good points. I can learn to be a better speaker. Oh, Alex, I'm glad you're here. And Ron says he's gifted in teaching. Ron, that's beautiful. What a gift to be a good teacher. And not just somebody who can get up in front of a group and talk, but somebody who actually has the gift of being able to connect people with a new skill and help them integrate it. What a beautiful thing. The world needs more teachers. And as you know, Ron, being a teacher doesn't mean you have to be in a high school, right? There's so many areas in our lives where we can expand our ability to teach. What a great gift. Thank you for sharing it. Anybody else, where, where is your strength zone? What is that thing that people tell you? You know what, you're really good at that. You're just a natural fill in the blank. I'd love to know. I'd love to know. And you know what? You might not have ever even thought about it, what your strengths are. I'll bet you, I'll bet you if I asked you, and I'm not asking, do not do this. If I asked you guys to type out your um, the areas where you've got weaknesses, you'd be spitting them out. You would have 50 if I let you go. I know you would. It is so easy for us to think of our weaknesses. Oh my gosh, I have a short temper. Oh my goodness, I'm not very patient. Oh, you know what? I'm not very organized. Oh, you know what? Um, I, I tend to sit too much. I don't move around enough. On and on and on we go. I want you to be able to do that with the things you're good at. Ron says, I'm a teacher. Shannon says, I'm a coach. I'm a good one. And I'm going to be a great one. I am working toward greatness in the areas where I'm strong. Where are your strength areas? I want to know what they are. And I want you to know what they are. The things you're good at. They might not even have to be marketable skills. We're not talking about making money here or turning your skill into a business, although certainly you can. Linda, I'm glad you're here, just in the nick of time. You don't necessarily have to take your strengths and turn them into money, but you certainly can. Carol's dropping some of her strengths in here. Open and run medical offices and doing medical billing. That's interesting, opening a medical office um, that is a lot more complicated than what I would have ever imagined. Um, and medical billing, if anybody's ever been to the hospital, you know that can be confusing. So Carol, awesome. Thank you for sharing your strengths. When, and you have a business that focuses on those things. People seek out Carol to open their medical offices, new doctors, because they have heard she's so great at that skill. She spent years honing it, developing her niche. If you guys are marketers, you know how important a niche is in a business. That's our strength zone. When we're in our strength zone, we have found our niche and we are allowed to focus on those strengths. As I wrap up, don't feel obligated 
to try and offset every one of your weaknesses by your own power. There are people on your team, and Bobby, I'm glad you jumped on. There are people on your team that you can build your team so they offset your weaknesses. I am not great at um, converting video into transcripts. I have somebody else who does that. I am not great at taking this video here and converting it into a video that I can post on YouTube. So I hire Kevin to do it. Kevin does that for me. I don't have to be great at that. I don't have to be good at that because it's not my strength zone. I get to spend the time I would have spent taking three hours to post a video on YouTube. He can do it in 10 minutes and I can take those three hours and three hours for me spent in my strength zone, I'm gonna accomplish some amazing things. That's how you can build your life when you give yourself permission to work in your strength zone and don't just sit back and coast because it's easy that way. So I'm challenging you, challenging you, share your strengths. I would love to hear them. Uh, and even more importantly, you need to hear them. I don't care how bizarre they are. In fact, if you've got a bizarre strength, I'd love to know it. I think those are fun. Some people have just amazing talents that I would have never guessed. Love to hear about it. Uh, but most importantly, over this next week, see what happens when you focus your energy into the thing that you're good at. And let the thing that you're not so good at fade from your attention just for a little while. See how that feels. It's going to feel good. It's freeing. And then you're going to see that very good turn into great and great has major impact. You can do it. I know you can. I can do it. I'm still trying to master it. Still spend way too much time focusing on the things I'm not good at, but I'm getting better about pulling away from it and saying, nope, that's not where you belong. Shannon, you do not need to be doing anything on your website. Stop. I know myself. You can get to know yourself too. So I encourage you, do that. And God bless you all. God bless you all as we enter the Thanksgiving season here in the United States. Um, I hope that you spend some time also being grateful. I certainly will. I'm grateful for you. And I love you all. Goodbye. Goodbye.